All right. <coughs> Everyone, again. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed your uh, rest weekend. Uh, so some people said uh, summer break. Is it that from uh, Binion who said it? So it was really great for you guys to have a rest. Uh, you know, we've come so from far, from week one, now we are to week six. I'm really excited to be with you guys on on this journey of becoming job ready uh, after the, tra the training. So today's uh, stand-up is going to be mostly about presentation of um, your week four and week five work. And but before presenting, of course, we hear from few people to share us how their weekend was. And uh, of course, the announcements from the, the team. So we have the, the 10 academic team here. So starting from me, uh, nothing really big different from, from the schedule that you got. So I know that this week is going to be based on based on Web3 and everything every, everything on the challenges about Web3. And I know you guys are getting ready about it. It can be new to everyone or most of everyone, but I'm sure that you guys are going to learn more about it. So the announcement is that after this stand-up, we have the introduction, then we have a, new, a tutorial in the afternoon. So let's start by hearing from different people how their weekends work, unless we have uh, any quick announcement from 10 Academy team. From Tutons, from Carrier's team. No announcement from Kerry. All right, so this, this guy's share. By starting from me, of course, I also take time for the weekend to rest, you know, just to start this week very good. So, yeah, I'm so excited to start week six. So let's hear from people from the course, shares how their weekends were, then we kick off the presentation after. Hi, Martin. I can see your hand. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, I believe you're all faring on well, and I hope that you all had a good weekend. It has been a long weekend, and uh, uh, there are so many things that uh, at least I was able to do uh, during the weekend uh, because it was uh, it, it was it was enough rest. Like I I, I felt like for for uh, the first time in like i think so many weeks i'm able to now rest and uh, feel relaxed yeah so just from friday it just started with a lot of resting and walking up and down and then uh unfortunately there was a friend of mine who had passed so uh on sunday uh that was where i spent most of my time uh yeah with that particular family then uh monday now is over here and it's been really it's been really a great opportunity just also interacting with people and oh, thank you michael uh interacting with people and just uh finding out like how other people uh interact with their day-to-day -day living and all that and i really appreciated it uh yeah thank you daisy yeah so it's good and i really appreciate and that was how my weekend was, and uh, I'm looking forward to starting this week. Yeah, it will be really good. Oh, thanks, Martin, and sorry for the loss. And uh, yeah, how are you feeling now? Yeah, now I'm, I'm better. Thanks, Martin. Let's hear from others.
Hi, Daisy. Hi, Marius. Um, thank you uh, for the opportunity. My weekend was um, really, really restful. Um, I met my friends on Friday, um, and I spent the rest of Saturday and Sunday just indoors, um, sleeping mostly and catching up on some Netflix shows, um, and then just sleeping again for the most part. So really glad for the extended opportunity to rest. Very good, very good. Um, I'll start to turn off Daisy for sharing. I mean, thank you for sharing. I learned that from the slack that Asante Sana means thank you in Swahili. Uh, so let's hear from a few people, like two to three. Then we start presenting from the groups, Liniam and also Stella. Uh, I also see Yababa is on the call, so it will be easy for us to start the presentation after Biniam and also Stella, because we, we will hear from every group. Let's start from Biniam, the next Stella. Okay, can you hear me? Very well, Biniam. Okay, good, good morning, Ibras and uh, everyone. Uh, uh, Martin, sorry for uh, your loss. Uh, that can't have been uh, easy so to give you an update on my weekend uh, uh, it was actually pleasant uh, i had a lot of rest and uh, last night uh, i went over some of the concepts uh, from the past uh, four weeks and i tried to uh, summarize and uh, understand uh, some of the concepts i've been struggling with in general my weekend was Pleasant, then uh, I'm ready for another week of challenge. Uh, this week is uh, Web3. I was expecting a machine learning project uh, because uh, the first six weeks were supposed to be that, but uh, I, I, I'm excited to look into this new territory. And uh, yeah, that's where I stand. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Benyan. And I hope. I hope you are really excited to face Web3. So, it's a new learning uh, concept, I, I think. All right, let's move to Stella. Thanks for sharing, Vinia. Good morning. I hope that you can hear me. Good morning. Very good. Okay, so um, I had a very good uh, weekend. Um, I had a lot of rest um, after the long weeks. Um, it was really nice. Also, ha hung out with my family. I even baked a cake yesterday. And uh, I also met my friends. I'm ready to begin the week. Very uh, re energized, and I'm looking forward to um, doing better. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Stella. I probably wasn't hearing you very well. It was cutting off somehow. Uh, you mentioned yesterday you did what, Stella? Oh, I said yesterday I hung out with my family and made a, and baked a, baked a cake. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So, <laughs> wow, that, that's really good. It, it should be you probably an asset for us during the birthday celebration remotely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for sharing, Stella. Hi, Yababa. Can we just pick up the presentation if you are on the call? Yep. Hi, I am here. Um, definitely looking forward to see how people just basically give us each group's just kind of final achievement show us. And so that would be the, in the future as well, every Mondays, we would just, uh, after a small introduction like that, we would continue to, you know, um, people giving us what they managed to achieve. It's kind of like, if you pre prepared a presentation, great. If not, you can go through one of the 
either your group's um, report, like which means like selected one, um, or a kind of slide that if you have prepared. So with that, yeah, without further ado, why don't we go directly to that? We can just go from group one to group six, uh, group five as order yeah. or reverse order. Let's go from one to five, yeah. yeah. So who would like to represent and present the kind of achievements and challenges and how you address them from group one? Go on, Laku. Melaku? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Okay. So we have prepared a small presentation. Great. Share with us. Project. Let me share my screen. Yeah. And if there is also a demo, that would be great. OK. Uh -huh. So uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. So uh, I would start by uh, congratulating our members on their achievement and working tirelessly for that project. So, uh, so the, one of the project objective was uh, to deploy a system that can transcribe the audio from the user so the system was designed by WFP to know to know some of African countries' nutrition usage. So the main objective was to transcribe an audio from user text. So when we come to the methods, so the first you, you can go like um, to full slide on slideshow, just if you are just so that yeah. So the methods we used, first the uh, audio will be collected from the users that we have give, that we have been given. So the audio data was given to us. And the uh, audio must be pre-processed first before using it to train the models. <clears throat> so uh, when we come to processing part, we have to convert all the audios from mono to stereo. We have found that some of the audio were mono uh, channels, so we have to convert them. Then <clears throat> we did some standardizing on the data by using sampling rate of 41, 44 kilohertz and resizing all the data to the same lengths so that uh, when, we, when we train the model, all the data must have the same length so, and we have also done, done some data augmentation. Data augmentation is to enhance the data set. If there is a lack of data set, so data augmentation will uh, enhance our data set. Then extract some feature from the audio. Uh, when we come to the modeling, we have used two types of architecture. The first one was a simple model using GRU. So, and uh, using Sandman, so, and the second one was, uh, in, the second one was we using uh, deep speech model. So, uh, the first model we have tried uh, was not uh, accurately predicting. It has also a spacing issue between the words and uh, it was not ac accurately predicting. So, you can see the true, pre the true data was, uh, so uh, our prediction was uh, something that is unrelated. So uh, in the word error per rate was uh, also 100 percent. So we have to uh, give give this more. We have to give away these models. So the second model was uh, uh, a deep speech model that you you use, uh, and the word error rate uh, decreased to 64%. And you can see from the picture that uh, 
uh, some of the words were correctly predicted and the spacing between the words were fixed. So uh, we chose the second model based on this criteria. And uh, on deployment part, so at last the module was deployed, uh, deployed on Azure Web App. So, and uh, we have done the front, the front end part using React and uh, the back end was deep, uh, done on using Flask. So, uh, we have, these are the tools that uh, we used for the deployment and I'll now uh, show you the, uh, <coughs> the web app, the deployed web app. So, uh, these are the front end parts. It has uh, a home and prediction and about us uh, page. So this will be the first page you will see when we when you visit our website. So it has a sample. If you can hear it, this is the sample uh, just to show you around what the web looks like. And uh, this is the sample uh, sample graph of the audio. So when we go to the prediction uh, page, it has, uh, we have only done the up uploading audio, so it cannot directly uh, transcribe an audio, so we have to choose a file. Uh, okay. So uh, this sample audio were downloaded from Zendo, so we have not uh, used them previously, so it will be any WAV file that we will be using. And, uh, is it, okay. Is is that all? Sorry, like is that no. all? Also, Amaha, like the same language or a different language that you are now trying to transcribe? It is a it's a different uh, language. It was you. It was downloaded from the Zendo audio file that you suggested. So uh, yeah, yeah. But is it same language, Amharic, in this case? Yes. It, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. So I think uh, the uploading time is a bit too slow, so we have to wait. Okay. Wait. As long as it's not more than a few minutes, it's okay. Can wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is is the uploading time? Uh, large because of your internet, or is that because of the like the so. Netflix doesn't give you much yes. upload? I, I don't think it's my uh, internet. Okay, you did yeah? You wanted to say? Yes, just to add up. Uh, we've been using Azure App Service, and uh, we use the least here. Uh, computing resource available because of uh, cost issues. Yeah. I think that will also be an issue, but uh, currently when using the local machine as well, it will take a bit time because it's uh, transcribing the audio into the text. Ah, so it's a model. It's actually yes. the model behind. It's running the yes. model. It's not just only upload. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, And how do you know when it is uh, finished? Is it will it give some? It yes, it will return the text on the bottom section. Okay. On this section. So on that one, okay. Maybe from a user UI UX perspective, you could first upload and confirm to the user, okay, your your audio is uploaded, and then kind of uh, model is running that one easily so that people have that uh, perception, okay, it's not in their fault, they can come back later. Okay. Great. So maybe if anyone knows uh, it's uh, uploading is working for you, you can show us. Or it is It's not uploading for me. Yeah, Nardos code. Yeah, so maybe,
if they're um, caching, like if it's the same file that you could actually, so another one that you could add is cache. So for example, by hashing the audio file, and if the hash is, okay, good. But how do we know this is correct? Uh, maybe if not, I, I can uh, take the audio file from my local machine. What's the name? The wrong key. Just a minute. You don't need to, no, no, no. You don't need to. Mm. Okay, share your screen now. Show your screen because then we can see, like, what is. Uh, okay, should I share my screen? Um, so, can she not play it? Just so, like, your audio. So, you can actually share your tab, Yididia, uh, and then play it. I think it's fine. Uh, okay. Can share. Uh, okay, Nardos, can you send me the name of the file? Or, or Nardos, can you play? Can you not play it? So, but we can't hear Nardos for some reason. What is impressive is that it actually... I'm sorry, guys. I'm in a very loud environment. Okay. That's why I'm not in my audio. Okay, but you could still share the audio of Maybe your... Yes. What is impressive is just that the text Sounds. for for others that I, I, I read Amharic, so that's why I see that it's it makes a correct sentence. So I just only now... I mean, I... I assume yeah, it's maybe that, this is the first one. So. Well, this is the audio. Maybe let's listen to this first. The internet has been closed and the internet has been closed. 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 I mean, I, I got that. I'm sure some people, like, uh, I think they, uh, they don't understand it. But okay, I understand it. Go on. Okay, so. And then we can tell whether this is or not for those this people who speak Amharic. So this is. Okay. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's really good. So that's not yeah. used, right? So for all those people who basically neither read this text nor could understand what was played, it is almost, I mean, one can understand what was played from from this text. Sure, there are some spaces that, yeah, that needs to be, to that's called post-processing. You could actually improve it, but this is amazing. You should, you guys should test it more and more. Um, okay. Great, okay. This is wonderful. You did, yeah? uh, maybe just to add up one technical challenge that we've been facing is uh, the text that we've been given or the data set had a bit issue on the text part. I think for those who can who, who can understand Amharic can clearly see that. Some of the text, it was a bit hard to pre-process because some of the letters were not on the same, uh, they should have been on the same word, but uh, they were, not on the same word, I don't know how to say that, but uh, for example, for those who understand Amharic, uh, the abs, when there was a word called Yabsara, yeah, yeah, the letter yeah was on a separate, as a separate word, and I think that was a bit hard on the preposing part, and that also influenced our training output. Yeah, I meant post processing. So after the model, so you could actually. Uh, add such context um, in, in a, like, so, so you have the text now, just like you did on the label pre-processing, you can also do on the post-processing. So the label 
so basically the, the output can be post-processed to make it better. But great, well done guys. I mean, this thing is seems, of course, from the UI UX perspective, you could uh, allow users to play the audio right from the site without leaving it. That would be easier, but uh, because you already have built that in the beginning, in the first page, in the home page. So, but this is great. Wonderful. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go to group two just to, to save time as well, but wonderful. We can talk um, ultimately then uh, summary discussion. Group two. A bit, yeah. Hello, guys. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, this day's Google. It will come. Just wait for it because this day's Google has this issue. It will take um, a few, but it will come. So we'll tell you when it just appears. I think it's now taking time. Taking longer than the usual. Okay, now you are you are. Go on. No, no, don't don't stop it. If you stop it again, now it will take some other time. Thank you. We now see it's just that your network is slow, so it's it's uh, gone. Okay, I'm going to present what uh, our groups did. So, our task was to take recognition with two major languages, which is which are African languages, which are not uh, uh, given that much attention. With all the speech recognition uh, technologies based on uh, Western uh, languages, but African languages not that much present in the uh, speech to text technology area. So that's why uh, uh, many people give attention to the speech recognition on African languages. Uh, so we have the data features, uh, which which are two, Amharic and this Amharic, which is Ethiopian language, and the Swahili which is a Kenyan language in which we have a data feature, uh, a train and the test data features, which is which uh, both have audio clips and uh, uh, at a, a transcript, which is the audio clips, the spoken word is. Uh, so the first step for the speech recognition was a metadata generation. We have a 16 kilohertz audio file uh, which is recorded between 20 and 15 seconds long. Uh, and uh, there is a script that's uh, based on the audio files. And the, our first task was to convert the audio files to mono channel, which is a dot .wav extension. Uh, and uh, the other task was to remove the punctuations from the transcripts to have a clear text presentation. So this is the code to prepare the text uh, and this is a code to convert the mono file the channel into the mono files mono dot wav files uh, so the the second uh, process was to convert to a more portable file to uh, to convert the audio and the transcript together and to convert it to the uh, a more portable 
file type and we choose a JSON file. So uh, we choose a JSON file because it's more portable in our side. So that's uh, the, the other part was uh, feature extraction from the speech recognition by using the, this JSON file. So there are three methods for feature extraction of speech recognition. This includes uh, a raw audio forms, spectro spectrograms, and MFCCs, smell frequency spectra. So the first part was raw audio forms. This was just looking the audio spectrum, the audio amplitude with, with its time convariance. And we just have not that much view on the raw audio forms. We just view like this. You can see my screen, right? This is the audio and you can you see my screen? Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, this is amplitude versus time for the single audio file. And we just plot the raw audio file and we got the transcripts. We just see in the middle part when the time hits uh, five seconds, its amplitudes uh, increase uh, dramatically. Uh, that's what we explore from the audio file. The second uh, visualization we took is spectrogram. Spectrogram will divide the sound waves into uh, different uh, algorithm, different parts uh, with the help of alg an algorithm, and it will divide it uh, among different uh, features that we can't see. So in this case, we have uh, a 161 features with 293 audio uh, uh, file spectrums. So we we want to reduce this 161. Want to reduce with this 161 features with a less uh, number because we want to calculate. We want to determine uh, more specific and more. Uh, more specific features for future for model uh, production. So there comes a male frequency coefficient. So with this uh, main representation, uh, it is based on short-term power spectra. It's more like uh, it's not that similar, but it's more like LTSM. So with the help of this uh, male frequency, we reduce the 161 features into certain features, which is uh, the thing it's uh, it's reduced because uh, the, uh, the the noise, uh, other parts, vague uh, sound waves were uh, removed from the data. So we, we use this male frequency spectrum for our future model uh, processings. Uh, uh, the next part is deep neural network for acoustic modeling. Tired uh, will continue with this. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Thanks, Abel. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I hope my screen is visible now. Yeah, visible. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation, Abel. Um, uh, the second part is uh, what we have did on acoustic modeling. Uh, especially, we have used a deep learning model to uh, model our acoustic for our speech recognition. As Abel said, we have attempted slightly also, but uh, fully we have uh, uh, full functional code is done on. Amharic, uh, Amharic to uh, speech to take issues. So, <clears throat> as you know, the, there are most common uh, automatic speech recognition algorithms like a uh, hidden Markov model and the deep uh, neural networks such as CNN and RNN. And uh, the hybrid of them are important. As uh, you know, CNN is uh, mostly it is important on visual data sets uh, prediction and uh, so that we have used uh, male spectrum for CNN case and uh, 
uh, in uh, recurrent uh, neural networks in another deep learning algorithm. It, it is good at processing sequential inputs most of the time. So we have selected that one by the reason. Then as uh, we have seen from uh, more uh, literatures also, uh, they, they, are, uh, they score a good uh, result. So when we start so with What kind of data representation did you use for RNN? Yeah. It said okay. like the male for CNN. E e yeah, for... Uh, for uh, RNN, I am going to describe okay, it actually. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, for the simple RNN, we have uh, we have modeled with one layer of gate recurrent units and uh, with a simplified type of uh, long sh uh, long short term memory current neurons. And uh, for this one, uh, we have used a simple epoch, which is twenty epoch with a size of by size of one hundred. And uh, we have uh, uh, we have seen the result as uh, it is written here. So it is not that much uh, uh, accurate, and uh, our WER uh, or word error rate is one that is completely not good. And uh, we have hybrid. Uh, we have used the hybrid of simpler and the uh, CNN model and. Uh, and our first model contains pre-processing model that expects an audio data and uh, which generates male spectrogram and uh, which described in the feature extraction section and uh, a CNN network that expects male sp uh, spectrogram representation and uh, which processes the image using one dimensional completional layer a simple RNN layer with four, 400 RNN units on CTC layer that competes CTC loss value for the model. So in that case, we have created the model by combining CNN and simple RNN. Uh, as you have seen, we, we have used it without pre-processing and after pre-processing. Without pre-processing, it is about layer. Without pre-processing layer, we have used CNN RNN stack. Then uh, the total number of parameters, as you have seen from here, is 481 comma 185 for uh, total parameters and the uh, four trainable params is 479 and the uh, 629 and then enter and trainable params is 1 comma 556 then uh, as you have seen from the prediction it is somehow good now uh, when it is compared with simple rnn hybriding cnn and uh, simple rnn is uh, it 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 does good somehow. And uh, the final one is CNN with uh, bidirectional RNN. So this is the, our uh, second models uh, with a pre-processing mo model that expects an audio data and uh, generates male spectrogram, which described, uh, okay. And uh, a CNN network with three two-dimensional compilational layers we have used and uh, each having a max pooling layers with a uh, rule activation and uh, in addition to that in an rnn network consisting of four bidirectional long short term memory layer and uh, having 400 rnn units and uh, a ctc layer that competes the ctc loss value for the model stack together as a single speech model uh, is considered and uh, as you have seen, we have developed this model. And uh, here we have got uh, an accurate uh, result from this uh, model. And finally, the average, the minimum uh, WER, uh, our word error rate is 0 0.50. Even, sorry, uh, even when I uh, back you to the literature, this, uh, this one is uh, very important because uh, from literature, the maximum for the error is here. It is uh, 0 0.67, but our C is no, no. about... No, no, no. Okay. okay. That's 0 0.06, not uh, 0 0.6. That's 6.7%. Okay. okay, 0 0.06. 6, yeah. So that's yeah. very, very small. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. So uh, these hours and uh, 
as a conclusion from overall result uh, uh, result but then in both i don't understand okay. I, I think no your conclusion just before your conclusion you just showed no. uh, if you go above that 0 0.5 is on one sample right yes actually so you are mentioning that as one sample the rest yes, are like you have even one war which is kind of at all not matching so you can't yeah. you you can't just choose one that has really worked well and and quote that as your final result that's okay. that's really not correct okay. okay so you have to take into account even here for example i see that it's good right because i see that uh, a lot of it at least um but it's it's still kind of you even some of the very important elements are missing for example on the point six but then on one uh so on for example when you have abu paulos you know in terms of context that's much better than actually sometimes what you have married like the one before it which says married bamangus meyazu the economy blah blah and that one uh uh, it's yeah. for example contextually that one is really losing a lot it's like because it, it of course you know what is the topic in yeah. this case if you were to model now topic based on this you would basically understand the subject and okay. the, ob the verb maybe <laughs> and and of course the object you might um, you might miss but what i'm saying is that you cannot just simply use like the best one for one that was best and then quote that just uh, you should you guys should improve otherwise this is really shown as no, okay. um something like if i were to look this i would feel you haven't understood anything about uh, no, okay. estimating Met metric is important if you if you don't understand the metric people would assume either you you actually are cheating or you don't know what you're doing which is no. the worst and both of them are, are not good so you have to be no. very careful up to this you have done really well but just the final part you basically um are i think this you know the conclusion is wrong okay actually uh, that's wrong and uh, uh, i i run i have run it from from my machine side if they only on 20 points i don't know uh, maybe i will try to run 50 points if it is accurate from his side those part I don't yeah. know. Maybe that is it. Uh, yeah. For uh, good. for I mean, the conclusion, I will yeah. optimize. I will optimize. Yeah. Just yeah, don't yeah. mention the best one, but more of yeah. the average. Aver uh, average should be. Yeah. Or maybe you can say like we we achieved up to sometimes the the best scenario is up to 0.5. So the the yeah. kind of being honest is uh, key in this kind of things because you know basically someone cannot use now your model to do much um at the moment and also you have to be testing it of course on the test data but also on different things for example your own record and then you have to basically say like okay if i now tell it you know talk to this model how much of it recognizes right so if you can't do that but get another data and and make sure like that but okay so great right. thanks guys i think uh, you know in Thank this you. minding time i will okay. just switch to is there anything that other people from group two can add want to add just yeah uh, we just have dashboard yeah okay great then us. okay uh, yeah, hello. Coming up. yeah hello. can you guys hear me yeah we can hear you good okay uh, sorry uh like this is the landing page you would get to when you first uh, what is the technology the used to build uh, we used uh, React for the front end and uh, Flask for the back end. Great. Okay, so let me just choose one sample from the test data. Uh, and where is it deployed? The time the cabin does a go to It's not actually deployed yet. Uh, I just have it on my local machine. Were you able to hear that? I don't think uh, we did. It. I mean, somehow. Oh. We'll play it again. The time the cabin does a go to look away, we give my melon a stack where the dinner it will ever go. Come, I cannot be fit in a pair. Okay, okay. 
So from the front end perspective, this is good, right? Uh, just for um, group one, I think that this is just what I was saying, but which is good. Like we were able to play it and then we were also to see. So from design UI perspective, this is really good. Okay. So, but the Gavin does a goat to give him to the Gavin does a goat to look away because Mamela and the Tesbaro did not eat with a rego, Kahams had an act of it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's exactly just what you have, what you showed, what that does show. It's somewhere around 60 70 percent uh, word error. But well done. I mean, I really like the simplicity and the functionality of the dashboard. That's good. Yeah, we've also tried to incorporate uh, like uh, transcribing like live recording, but like the model's performance for uh, samples that are, that right. are out of the training. Um, okay. Ethiopia, um, Katantawi, Sultani. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Ethiopia, Yermanget, Saron Kajamura, Amatas Naskutrol. This is going to be terrible because of the way I said it. Ethiopia, Yermanget, Saron Kajamura, Amatas Naskutrol. Okay, transcribe. Okay. So just for those people, he said just uh, about the Ethiopian Airlines, which has long uh, experience or long time experience. So let's see if the if this model identifies anything about airlines. Ethiopia, Benu, work, Jamara, work, Yeah. So it actually just it doesn't identify airline. Um, but it's also because the way that he spoke mm -hmm. very, but then he and it, it understood time better and then the subject better. So this is the way to, for everyone to be able to say like, okay, if I now want to use my model, okay, I can improve it, but even without improving, where is it good? It seems you guys, your model really identifies subject better. And also it identifies, uh, time better because the Gemara uh, and who let all of those numbers seems to really recognize well. So you can specialize in probably like maybe the data does it have more numbers, more things. Um, so you could explore that. But this is really good. Like from the, you know, you just have to now improve the model. But the front end, just please deploy it because this is really good. Okay, okay. Good, thanks. Thank thanks. And hopefully that's it. And group three, please. So um, Everest, could we extend that? So what is next? It's the tutorial? The tutorial, but we can extend by 30 minutes. So. Exactly. So let's just, um, yeah, let's finish the presentation so that, okay, go on, Martin. Okay, uh, I don't know whether you can be able uh, to hear me. Daisy, is that in your group? <coughs> yeah, yes. And do you want to skip to the, the group four so that you can, you want somebody to join? Or yeah. You want... Yeah, okay. In that case, yes. why don't why don't we do that? Like... Um, you know, uh, Daisy is not in our group. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, we are in group three. Yeah, so uh, I'll let... Uh, Baruk, to do to share with us the preprocessing, then I'll share with you the presentation on the on how the model works. Great. So Daisy, which group are you then? Just just so that I'm clear. Very good. Point. Ah, okay, good. Hello. Hello. Okay. I, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, and we can hear you, and we can see okay. your screen. Okay. All right. So, uh, so let, let me start with uh, the data preprocessing, and Martin will uh, uh, take over me. So, uh, in data preprocessing, we start by uh, loading the transcription data. Uh, so, uh, after that, we go through some kind of uh, data uh, transcription data cleaning. So, uh, especially for Amharic. Uh, so, I hear that uh, he had. Uh, 
uh, group one, I guess, the yeah, UDDS group. They go through some kind of challenge to clean the tickets. So what so we have followed is, um, I just uh, got an Amharic dictionary, which almost have uh, every Amharic words. So, uh, so what, what I have uh, done is just try to compare every input files uh, I mean, each word is with, with, with this one. And whenever it, it uh, got the right word, it will skip to the next word and something like that. So some kind of comparisons uh, we have followed and we, we are actually got a much better result. So uh, as you see the result here, so it, it helps us to uh, clean the text. What are we seeing? Is that the labels preprocessed yeah. or? Yeah, this is the preprocessed the pre text. Okay. So uh, that, that might help. Actually, it, it takes too much time as uh, Yadubal, as you said, it, it will be much better uh, as in, in the post pre-processing. So for uh, doing the training text, it, it takes too much time because it, 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 it performs some kind of comparison for each and every word. So that might not be uh, very productive. I mean, it takes too much time. for. But, but both are good, right? So if yeah. you do the pre-processing as well as the post-processing, then you really yeah. improve better. Okay, let's see, let's see. Yeah. So uh, uh, after pre-processing the, 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 I mean, the cleaning the text uh, and before cleaning the text, we try to see the word distribution. Um, so, uh, to for for this is just for Swahili, so there are distributions. I think that they, they are somehow they sp still need some kind of pre-processing for Swahili text. But after pre-processing the Amharic one, almost the uh, the one with uh, the maximum frequency of the word no, uh, the, the others. Are, I mean, just we consider only the ones which have more than um, some kind of um, uh, limitation. Uh, so above 1000 for a given yeah above uh, 1000 appearance uh, word we consider here in this case uh, so so it, it gives us much better reason even though we are yeah, not just working can, for can you go to the swahili and then can can i ask just anyone in the swahili is that Actually, i mean i understand the amharic that's correct yeah. like now is like so comes but is yeah. do they mean anything um swahili speakers not actually for yeah. swahili we are not uh, working uh that much uh, cleaning yeah. we, but, just but i'm just i'm just more like for the words like this yeah. na ya wa kwa ni, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah those are like the stop words the stop words in uh kiswahili so that means you use so much na yeah there's a lot of na na it's like end na is end in kiswahili uh, yeah okay okay, okay. thanks Marcin. uh after that, we go through some kind of uh, pre-processing for the audio data. We compute the audio duration. And after that, we also resize the duration to a certain amount so that everything will have a similar uh, level of uh, audio duration. Uh, we try to convert the channels. So those who, who are, who, which has only a mono channels are converted to the, the stereo and we standardize the audios and uh, the durations are were resized and uh, we also perform some kind of data augmentation by shifting the uh, the audio with uh, some amount and and this is the result after we shift the uh, the time with uh, actually we shift to the right with um, uh, some some amounts it's i think it's 10 yeah, so this is the data augmentation we have gone through and Martin will continue from this. All right, uh, thank you, Biruk. Uh, let me share my screen. All right, I don't know whether you are able to see my screen. Hopefully it will come, but not, it hasn't come. All right, it's and okay. uh, how about now? Now it's coming. Yeah, we can see. Okay, that's good. Uh, but your connection got worse. Uh, uh, but, but it's okay, continue. All right, just... uh, that is good. Uh, I don't know, there's, it's a bit slow, but uh, 
I've also shared in the no, the resolution is so low because I think because of your, uh, most likely because of your connection. But just go on. Don't assume we will be able to read anything from from the thing that we can see some kind of. Maybe picture. maybe I can share for you, Martin. Yeah, he can share. Okay, and uh, we can talk. Maybe Martin. Okay, okay no, uh, it's, talking, it's fine. No, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, so uh, for us, uh, the model that we used was deep speech, and uh, it was just getting a particular wave, converting it into a spectrogram, getting it into the CNN architecture, then uh, producing, uh, mapping it to its labels, and then that uh, puts it into the deep neural networks, or it puts it into the LST LSTM architecture, that's the bidirectional uh, LSTM architecture. So um, the cleaning, as we have as he has explained, you just load, resample, resize, then augment, then I convert to MFCC, the spectrograms, then you can be able to uh, get whatever you... Can I ask you? Yes? Can I ask you, Martin? Yes. Is that picture, did you guys produce it or is that uh, you took it from uh, the internet? We took it from the internet. No, just because, I mean, it's good and I thought, let me let me know just if that was something that you did or versus okay good continue okay uh yeah so just uh, as you explained the preprocessing uh, but uh, for me i just wanted to share on the side of the modeling part so uh with the modeling as you have seen in the structure above you first of all get it into the cnn architecture and then uh once you get it into the cnn architecture and use the connection is temporal classification for the ctc loss uh you will be able to evaluate your particular model using the word error rate and i want to show the results that uh, we got uh, i tabulated it in um i tabulated it in an excel sheet and the excel and the excel sheet so this, is, this one is for different models or for for what the excel it's for the deep speech this the deep speech type model yeah, yeah but what is what is each row was showing Oh yeah, so for each row, it shows uh, the loss, the word error rate, and the epoch. Ah, okay, so for one training, as epoch increase? Yeah, so as epoch increase, so we're going in a descending, so we're going like uh, from epoch 50 uh, all the way uh, downwards. That is, uh, we just uh, shifted it a bit. So uh, as we were working on different, like we trained it, because uh, when, we were, when we were studying on a certain article, it was telling us that uh, the best uh, epoch rate can, that can be achieved is 50 epoch rates for particularly the deep speech model. And that is what uh, we opted for doing. So we ended up uh, doing uh, 50 epoches and uh, this, we got it just by getting the particular list and then are converting it into a data frame then uh, we made the csv so the loss and so this plot is it showing for a validation a training or a test set so it's it's for the validation it was uh, let me just uh, i could show no because it's it's so good that's why i'm asking like if we look at the result oh as yeah you uh, down, as you go down it's getting close to if you go yeah, to it's getting down. closer and closer and closer so uh it, yeah it it gets, one one like basically it's like almost uh 18 percent that's really good comparatively to what we saw so that's why i'm asking is this training or validation yeah so this was validation we use the validation uh data set and we the data that we are getting was uh we first after training it uh, we trained it, we trained it, we trained it to the epoches then. Uh, when we validated it, we were able to reach at 18% word error rate. Uh, but that was after very many trials because uh, we had tried like around six different types of models, uh, which uh, I had shared uh, in the notebook that uh, we were using. So after that, after we were able to achieve, actually, if you check in the abstract, it's just uh, a simple, uh, explanation of how it was able to uh, we trained it for like six hours that is we left it running for six hours so that uh, at the end of it it could give us 18 percent awarded rate actually looked at the at the particular models uh, that were in the industry standard I saw that it was between four to around uh, around six to fourteen percent 
and uh, we felt that we've tried, we've really tried. Yeah, so if you are able to uh, access the particular link that I've shared, uh, also, let me just open it from over here. Yeah, if you are able to access the particular link that I shared. Ask, just to ask, what is like the technology you guys use to build your, your front end and back end? Oh, we used uh, React JS for the back end and Django for the, uh, sorry, we used Django uh, REST framework for the back end and then React JS for the front end. Great, awesome. Okay. And then we deployed it to Heroku. Uh, over here. I've shared the link uh, at the chats, so uh, those who understand Kiswahili can uh, go ahead and test it out. So uh, let me just first start by uh, uploading one uh, from the test data set. All right, so uh, this will allow me to. Uh, okay. So it's uh, it's doing. When you want to transcribe, you just click the transcribe audio, and the we save the model. That's why it's a bit fast. Uh, if you can be able to see it from over here, it's already transcribed it. Uh, so here it's saying Nilizani Kuni. Mtu muhimu kabisa na alianguka. So uh, let me just play the audio. Uh, actually, I have seen that I should also add that feature for where you can also play the particular audio. Uh, let me just this, check this is which one? 501. Yeah, it's this one. The moment it's opening. I don't know they are able to hear. Uh, I don't know they are able to hear it. Well, we, we did hear it, uh, even if I don't understand, but tell us because you understand. So tell us how. Okay, it says Mskilizaji, Uyunim Tumuhimu Kabisa, Nam Na Mskilizaji. So the <laughs> the place where it's failed is this part. Uh, yeah, the rest are good, and also this particular part. Okay, I, I think with the accent for the sorry, the, the accent for Tanzania, uh, the D H. Uh, when they say T H uh, in Kenya, we it's just like we say D H is the. DH is the, but for Tanzania they use as Z, so uh, that's why it uh, it it comes like this Nilizani, but in reality it's actually Nilizani. It's because of the accent from Tanzania is different from the accent from Kenya. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that and great, but can you understand the context, like, or would you completely miss, like, will be misled? By what it is does that make yeah. sense first yeah it uh, it makes a sentence yeah. uh, somebody who reads kiswahili can also just uh, comment yeah amal was saying something yeah it makes sense actually okay yeah uh and the so spacing in the word is perfect like it seems because 18 percent is good so is that yeah. correct yeah the spacing is good it's actually forming like real words like uh mtu amuhimu kabisa na alianguka wonderful awesome. so it so that what would be a good test is also now can you say can you press and then yeah exactly yeah yeah and then uh there is also for uh record okay. now I'm, I'm so like Amal and Stella, you can say like Amal and Stella um, are doing well. Just can you say that, and then we can see what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. Though also when recording, I don't know. I think there's some bit of cleaning I need to do on the particular web file because 
uh, it doesn't bring very accurate results, but okay, let me just uh, go ahead and record. All right. Uh, Amal Nastella, uh, nilikuwa nauliza wanaendeleaje? So this is how it sounds. Amal Nastella, uh, nilikuwa nauliza wanaendeleaje? So if you click transcribe. Uh, okay. Uh, th this one, it's with, with uh, when recording, I, I think it doesn't really bring out the... Yeah. I, I mean, it's perfectly understandable, but it's just that yeah, you guys have to work on that, but it's true. It doesn't usually the ecosystem, the sounding, you know, the pre-processing you have done may not have included environmental impacts like including delays i mean maybe you did but you may you may have just only kind of you have two minutes two seconds only but sometimes there might be some overlap so but can you try one more just something simple a comment can you say the lion runs or something that the training because also we have to see what what the data was the training is it from articles is it from you know what kind of okay. data was used Okay, uh, let's try. Um, J. Ukosalama. Oh, uh, sorry. I, uh, okay. J. Ukosalama. But, but I think, are you uploading? Because you're not uploading. Did you need to upload it or what? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's just, uh, I was, I, I, I speak out. Then after speaking out, I click transcribe audio and then okay, it gotcha. does the transcription. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something, I think it can't be this bad because some, like you have, you have a good model and it seems to me like the recording is, doing something you should play so can you play it back the one you recorded yeah so uh what is if, upload doing what is upload doing oh this uh the upload it's uh it's it's not it's just directions on how to upload okay. but uh the upload is really from over here but uh if i i think there's also something to deal with uh, how i was handling the cash because uh there is a there was that also there was a time when it was speaking the previous uh, audio that i had played uh, yeah. so uh when we tested it using the one that Biruk, we tested it on Biruk's machine it was giving uh more accurate when it comes to recording yeah it's okay no but so one thing the the UI UX really great. Just you only need to play exactly to add a play for the ones that are uploaded. But the simplicity and the design is wonderful. And also just I want just like what they showed in group one, it would be so nice now to see in real life the performance um, improvements. But great. Well done. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not really, but uh, I, I, I believe the reason for the recording, uh, why it's not giving very accurate results, uh, it's the cleaning part. So, yeah, I think it's the cleaning part. Uh, maybe uh, for Amhari part, we were tried, but uh, the time was short and we actually wanted to come up with both languages. So, uh, and the performance was uh, not good for Amharic. That's why we skipped and we just only uh, select Wahali. So maybe if you have, if, we, if you give us um, just a day shot, maybe we, we will uh, uh, build the Amharic. I mean, we will train for Amharic, yeah. Yeah. So in any way that my proposal would have been, uh, definitely this week you are working on this week's project, but I also need you to basically whatever data that you have there you wanted to take or something, you need to, cl to clean your space as well because I'm going to switch off the, uh, I'm going to delete, uh, I'm going to delete most of 
the data. So you just have to keep only, you know, don't delete folder. Uh, um, so that, you know, sorry, just, um, yeah, of course, yeah, sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I can open just for certain hours and I will let you know, guys. And so that you keep whatever data or whatever model also you want to keep into just one place for future reference you can put it as like um, you know don't delete folder you create a don't delete folder the rest i will delete basically um, everything else you can put it into don't delete and delete and then i will delete because it will cost us some time just especially because some of the models outputs whatever that you don't need anymore will are large sometimes and it might um, it might cost a lot the space at the last last year we had i mean on batch four we had about five terabyte overall which was costing us quite a lot so what i'm going to do is that i will delete the unnecessary data uh, additional data you have downloaded whatever but yeah i will open it now after this call and then um you will have some time until evening and and then that will be the case awesome okay Great, thanks group three. So is group four ready or shall we go to group five? Group four or group five? Hello? Anyone from group four, Desi? Um, yes, yes, yeah. I'm here. I'm not able to reach Marcus, um, so okay. I'll be presenting, but the five can go up next. Okay, before that, Martin, what's, yeah? Yeah, uh, the, I've just realized that what the issue was, yeah. uh, you need to give it like uh, some bit of like time, like when you when you are saying a word, you just like say it, then you give it like two seconds, then you say the next word, then you like that. Yeah, that's the augmentation. That's what I was expecting. It's just that on online recording, there are definitely delays um, on how the words are right. So you probably need to take into account that either in the recording, in the pre-processing, uh, or somewhere in the augmentation. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Good. Okay. Yeah, this is started, um, and then. Sorry? So do you want to start it or do you want to wait? Um, I can pass, maybe the next group can go next. As I okay, good, good. Group five. Who's representing group five? The one aspect I don't understand is the silence. This is supposed to be a professional group. Somebody has to say something. Or is that your mic doesn't work? At least raise your hand. We don't have anyone from group five? Matilda, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, Bibal. Hello, good morning. Good Hello. afternoon, sorry. So can you give us um just a few minutes? And the one who's presenting is about to start. Just a few minutes. Okay, good. That 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 that's it. That's that's it. That's all we need. Sometimes you just have to okay, no action. Somebody just have to say that. You can't just keep silent, like this is not professional in the sense. Okay, Martin. Yeah, uh, I was requesting whether we could also just uh, present again. Uh, yes, yeah, go, go for it. Like just uh, quickly okay. just show with the improvement. So people will see the screen. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay, just uh, let me start. J. Uko Salama. Uh, 
Uh, so it's it's just uh, it's taken the that particular that particular place for Salama. Let me put one word. J. Oh, it, it was too short. J. Uko Salama. Uh, yeah, so it's, it, it picks uh, especially the one that it's able to hear clearly. What, what, I, what I want is that locally you should have, like now, you should just have a local model that is tested. So now this is fine, but in the presentations, usually what you would do is that you don't want to show this, right? Like, so right now the model is like you have a point one eight um, error rate but it's really not that it's not getting it it's understandable for many reasons but in a kind of whenever you want it there, there has to be like maybe it's the data you're your, your speaking is not trained for maybe that's not the case maybe it's the like the loading but there should be you sh like in principle there should be a model that you have tested this if that is the case you can just also open and, and say it okay from the front end maybe is bad but from at least even just uh you know um, let's say anywhere just locally deployed it should work right so but i think it's you know understandable presentations demos even in the most um you know prepared way it will fail and it's fine but yeah. the most important part is understanding you know expecting the pos different possibilities that it might go wrong and preparing a backup I, mean, yeah. I think it is it is important to know why you know it should work so why doesn't it work like is that just uh, the recording because it can't be like that it it can't be that bad like it must be rec recording something else yes actually the the i was looking at uh, the moment it uploads the audio uh, it converts it to when, when recording normally it will take it like 44,100 kilohertz and then it will transform it into 16,000 kilohertz because uh, that is the one which it's able to read it we are able to keep it for the model at uh, that particular sample rate to make it at least more accurate so uh, another one you could quickly test is that do you have in your computer audio recorder yeah 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 so if you because me, there might me, be also compression so just let, uh, let me share record it and then upload it so no now don't do it like we'll continue with the other group and then you'll show us a thing just record it and then save it in a file and then upload it because there might be compressions there might be many things that's an audio processor is doing mm, yeah uh sure thing yeah. uh, we'll uh, do that okay yeah but let's continue because of time either group four or group five if no one is able from that then we can close it so can someone from so group four uh matilda okay what is the issue with group five I'm sorry, um, Vinny was supposed to present for us, but it looks like he's not around. So maybe I can just, um, yeah. I can just do it together with exactly. um, Meron. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So allow me to share my screen. Yeah. So are you able to see my screen? now yes okay so um we'll just go through the article we came up with for for our for our group um <clears throat> and so first the goal of this project was to convert um Herrick's spoken sound to written format so for this project we decided to focus on the um Herrick, um 
on the Amharic language. Okay, so um, I can just go right to the pre-processing. So this is the data we use, the one you, pre you provided us with. And this is the um, procedure we took for pre-processing. That's preparing the data, spectrogram generation, standardizing, audio resizing, um, converting to stereo, and augmentation. So this is how we prepare the metadata file, which was um, the file named um, TRS string text. Um, so this is um, the output we got from uh, after generating the metadata. And then we came up with a spectrogram, the spectrogram generation, and it is spectro the spectrogram is a visual depiction of an audio with um, the x-axis presenting time and the y-axis presenting frequency, just as um, you can see. Um, also, we came, we went ahead and standardized um, the sample rate. Um, we made the sample rate um, 44 kilohertz. Um, and this is how we did it. Here's the sample code of how we did it. So we created um, a script for data cleaning, which is what you see here as DC and DV for data visualization. Yeah, and this is how as our sample, our <clears throat> sample rate was standardized. And then for, for the resizing, this is the procedure we took for resizing. This is the code. So we truncated each audio to be less than five seconds long. And yeah, so this is this is how we did it. And then we converted into stereo. Um, um, so um, this is um, this is this is how we went about it. And then um, we did the augmentation. So I'm just um, just briefly going through what we did. So for the de planning architecture, we used um, to DCNN, RNN, and um, the CTC loss function to build our ASR. So I think I can call for, I can ask Meron to continue with the architecture. So maybe we um, can stop sharing and she can continue. Yep, Meron. So Meron, Meron, are you there? I think she joined, unless she left. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're you're but we can't so hear you. Okay, sorry. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can hear you now. Thank you, Matilda. So basically, I'll go over the modeling process we tried to do. So this is I'm showing you from the VS. So we, we are we are not seeing we are not seeing your yeah. screen. Uh, okay. okay. Can you wait a bit? Now, now, now we can see your screen. It okay. I'm not having a really fast connection, but I'll try to show you what we did. So basically we did run on our machine as well, uh, the training model part. And we also did uh, use the AWS machine, but we were having trouble with it in the beginning. So we had to use our computer to do some of the trainings. So this is basically the function where we build our model and uh, we tried to do different approach numbers and try to get the better results uh, and everything. Also, by altering uh, the approach side and the back side, we try to get different uh, outcomes. But uh, to be honest, we didn't get much luck in the significantly reducing the word error from one. Uh, but we have reached like 0 0.9 to some th some figures like that. So this is our model we've built. Can you see my screen? I'm not sure if yep. you can. Yeah, yeah. no, we, we, we do. Okay. So this is basically our model. And I, I think I should go ahead and show you. These are the total parameters we used as we are using our machine. We try to reduce that, uh, our local machine. Since we're using that, we try to reduce the total parameters. So basically uh, uh, this is one of the outcomes we reached uh, and we tried different runs so this is I think the last run I tried uh, with about maybe 50 approach no 10 approach I'm sorry uh, and then we try to see the prediction right here uh, and so basically we also run like 
fifth year coach and hundred with with like hundred bat size on the AWC machine. And it took really a while to do that as well, but we didn't get any much results. But before we are getting, we had, we, we had a result where we reduced about one, uh, less than one point uh, word year, and we did include that in our report. Just generally, this yeah. is what so, so something is wrong with. Something is really wrong in terms of, actually it's not the model, the model is not trained. Somehow it collapsed to just predicting only one thing, whatever okay. you give it. Right, so that's what it's telling okay. you. It, it's just whatever you give it, it doesn't care. It's just always, so either in the code, somehow there is some error that just allows it to be only speaking out one. Maybe the prediction is not really, it's not maybe even running anything. It's just giving something. Okay. So that could be, you know, like when you look at like that, when the predictions are all identical, it shows a systematic error. Okay. Okay. You know, predictions are all the same. R for no, that's it. So it doesn't, it doesn't at all try to understand. Okay, uh, and then consider the dashboard. This is what we were able to do. Uh, we used React and Flask uh, for the back end. Uh, if anyone from the back end team is here, I can. I think they would give you a better explanation, but the, to be honest, this is what there is. Then there's the part where you can upload a uh, file in. Let me try it. Okay, there seems to be an application response here, but uh, yeah, fire up your successfully. Okay, so it's not working. Yes. Okay. Good. What is in the insight? Anything in the insight? Uh, no. no, no. It says inside the cert. The cert. Uh... Yes. Uh, yeah. This is this is pretty much it. Thank you. Good. Thanks. I mean, yeah. It's, um it's it's not easy sometimes to just put everything but good that you went and built everything and great thanks anyone from that group uh, want to add if not then just one last time group four is there anyone from group four yes i can go okay But is it, how many people are here from group four? And I'm just really curious why everyone is silent. Like in a way that it's your group, you belong in it, and it you should just at least somehow explain also, it shouldn't be only one person's kind of, some, for example, earlier, group five, the same. It's like you should just be like, whenever you belong to something, you must def, you must be active. To respond if someone is not there so i think the being silent is really the worst form of professionalism so just think twice Go we probably have daisy only from the group I try to... no no i mean now we have daisy of course i mean daisy was telling us of course to wait as well that's great what i'm saying is others has to interfere as well when there is a, a need at least write something or you know a, it, it's just that it, it needs to be done that way. Um, okay, go on, Daisy. Um, really sorry about that. Um, most of my members are faced with power outside challenges. Yeah. Um, and uh, Gezahim is 
dropping in and out of the call. Hopefully, if he joins in while I'm presenting, he can be able to um, chime in. But I'm going to start. So, good morning, everyone. So, this is um, week four. And uh, the goal for this week's task really was to build an article to teach recognition to all the Amharic data sets. Um, and the motivation really was that the world, the World Food Program would want to deploy an intelligent form, collect nutritional information across Africa, um, in Ethiopia and Kenya. Um, and the idea is that when people, whenever people want to buy food, they can just use their voice to um, activate the app to register a list of items that they bought using their own um, language. So the data set is, as we've all seen, and uh, so that's where we can maybe post it. Um, and up to now, I think speech function is very clear to us. Um, it is basically the ability of a machine or program to identify words spoken aloud and convert them to readable text. Um, and the steps taken in this is the first you enter your input and speech, um, and your speech goes through signal processing, um, and features are extracted from that speech. Um, finally, your speech is able to be classified um, based on the model and output given in the form of text. Um, so there's been different te techniques to do this in the past. This include the dynamic text warping technique, um, the hidden Markov modeling, which really has been used to do exemplary work and is still being used, um, and the neural network, which really builds on the HMM model um, and together with use can achieve really good results. Um, but for the focus for today is that we're going to be using um, the neural network um, technique and in our case we're going to be using the convolutional neural network and uh, the RNN. So um, I don't want to go into all this in the interest of time but of course we're able to load our data using the Librosa Liberosa library and uh, do pre-processing um, for the stem. Given that sound is an analog signal, it's important for us to digitize it and this was achieved to um, uh, using a sample that so we are able to sample them at discrete intervals um, known as sample rate and that was achieved um, through Liberosa and using the IPython I display you're able to really see um, the content of the audio file um yes let me just get into the nitty gritty um because most of us have been able to present on this but we you are able to come up with spectrograms which then would be input for um our cnn um yeah. so we're going to use two deep learning architectures um which is one use of cnn for speech recognition. So basically we're using CNN in this case because um, convolutional neural nets are known for how well they generalize on visual data. And for the CNN, we are going to be feeding it a spectrogram of speech signals that we have been able to represent as images um, and then recognize speech based on the features identified on the spectrograms. And then we'll be able to use RNNs, which are recurrent neural nets for um, the deep learning architecture here. Um, so the main idea here really is to use RNN to extract outputs of the current time step based on the current inputs and previous inputs in a weighted manner because as we know RNN is best suited for sequential data where the output is dependent on some kind of sequence. Um, mm, yes, so we can just look at this maybe before we go to the notebook. Um, for the first architecture, we're able to use a CNN and a simple RNN. Um, let me just show that. So that we're able to go through. Yes, so this is the notebook. Um, we, we were able to come up with different functions to build a model, models for prediction. We're able to tokenize the data set so that um, we can have a sample sentence which is then encoded into numerical values which can then be fed into um, our model um, and as you can see that's a sample of the decoded sentence um, 
and of course here for the data generator this is where we pass in the ctc um function um Yeah, so I can just start right here. So here we have um, the simple RNN, and we are having total params as 237,888, um, and the, non the channelable params at um, 237 um, and 888. Uh, as you can see for this particular simple RNN um, model, so we were, we were able, the losses are really high, as you can see here, first off of the epoch sizes. So like for the first epoch, as you can see, we are having a loss of about 711.279, which is quite high, and it does not seem to um, decrease significantly. So mm -hmm. then we tried out um, predicting using a simple um, RNN, and even in this case, you can still see that the loss is still quite high because I don't understand I'm high, but you can see that the actual um, text um, audio, audio transcribed audio text fed into the model is this, but the prediction um, is totally, totally um, far from what is expected. And when we check out maybe a CNN plus a simple RNN, we can see that the loss here decreases quite significantly for this amount of um, params, yeah. So um, as you can see, as you can see here, all the way from 600 and something with a simple RNN, we're able to achieve a loss of about 267.39. Um, and this gets better um, when we try combining the mm -hmm. CNN. I mean, sorry, it gets better when you just use the bidirectional RNN. Um, because when you can see here for the outputs of the CNN and the simple RNN, you can see that there's, there's this. This is the actual text and the prediction um, comes to this. Again, I don't understand of height, but clearly the symbols really don't, don't match, um, um, which really does not compare the results you are able to achieve when using a CNN and a bidirectional RNN. Um, and maybe just let me scroll down in the interest of time. Yes, as you can see here, like the loss reduces significantly as you move from epoch to epoch, because at this point we are starting at a loss of 236.52. Um, and we, for the, for the 20th epoch, we see that the loss has reduced to about um, 24.155. Um, and really, when you look at, when you compare the actual versus the predicted text, um, even if you don't understand them high, you can see that slightly um, the actual text versus the predicted text does not really have so much of, of a difference, really. And the word error rate also reduces very significantly. You can see for this one, you are able to achieve a word error rate of 0 0.00, which really informed us to make use of this particular model for um, our prediction um, task. I was really mm -hmm. hoping that, I was really hoping that Marcos would be able to join us so that he can present on the functionality of the application here because we're having issues with deploying earlier because of file sizes. But I can just show um, a small demo from the first API backend we used mm -hmm. for this presentation. Um, which gets, let's, let's just wait here. So as you can see, we want, for, for this particular um, API, there's the get method and there's the post method. So the post method is when you are trying to send something to the API. So for this particular task, we are trying to post something to the predict function. And for the body, we want um, to go the form data way and we want to give it a key value, yes. Um, and the key value in this case is going to be a file. Yeah, so ideally we want to give it a .wav file, which is a file that's 
stored locally in our yeah, I want to upload a .wav file because the API expects input as a .wav file. Yeah, so for the post method, we're going to send it then to the API. Um, so we are just waiting for the transcription. We have sent the doc to one file, which is then going to be fed into a model. And now we await the transcription. Um, so that is the predicted um, text. Um, I really wish we were in the place to show the actual text now and mm -hmm. compare it to the predicted um, text. Mm -hmm. Um, but okay, at least I know what the actual text was, and I can say that it's not very far from what was predicted here. What's predicted here? Um, yes, um, I think that is it for for this particular presentation. We, are, we had challenges um, in deployment because of file sizes. Um, we, our front end was built using Shimlet. And the back end was built using Fast API. Um, DA was working so on the. What, is, what, what, what was the front end? Sorry. Um, Streamlit. Ah, uh, Streamlit. Okay. Yes. Great. Awesome. Yes, no, yes. it's it, it's a good attempt. It's good work. Definitely would have made. Of course, I mean, what you showed just the back end is working. All you need now is just yeah connecting it right. So that's good. Um, okay. Yeah, I think keep keep up deploying it, and I think you know that's a good thing. We will probably have to start providing some kind of server that would um, help you deploy at least. Um, you, ju you just have to think about it. Okay, wonderful. Great. So I think, you know, in the interest of, um, I'm just going to present what was shown. Uh, does anyone from that group, just before that, does anyone want to Comment or add. Still, I've seen that you had your hand raised. Did you want to comment? Okay. If not, you know, it's just that what was actually from prediction perspective, there were many others also from um, from last time the same project people have done and. Um, you know, it's this was, I think, one of the group who really did a lot in terms of uh, pre-processing and post-processing. And I think some of the things that you guys said, for example, in this group, they have done um, whatever, you know, and they had some kind of normalization and splitting um, and just outlier detection for that. And then, of course, the data augmentation aspect. And and then finally, what they managed to, like all of that pre-processing, post-processing, they really allowed them to to get to reach um, a good kind of trade-off. But what was really good because of the post-processing, they were able to really get to push it a lot of a lot of the values zero zero, right? But now, if you were like Tadessa again, if they were to mention now, okay, now they have uh, again also um, they see have pointed if they were just to give only the best value they could say like oh our thing is zero zero percent like basically we don't have error that's not true so in this one if you see a lot of the their predictions were zero zero like uh, most of the time and it's basically they were able you know to push and the maximum is somewhere like 0.47 and even in their deployment, I'm um, not sure if now the deployed version is there. I don't think there is um, given, but that was also that was one of like the very um, they achieved a very smaller error because of the because of the post processing and pre processing coupling, and of course everything that you guys did. So just I'm going to share this in the interest of like in case you want to look at it. And it is really, you can, I think one of the things that was not done last time, and I want I encourage everyone is that you have to understand what is your model good at. And if now you want to commission this, you know, 
to something you want to keep working for a while and you want to make it very useful where should you focus of course the data um, is small but is it good for something is it good for even number detection is it good for command detection is it good for even a single word detection what kind of words if you identify that you could actually benefit a lot from like actually then giving it more training in that area and making it super useful because you know to really build a super amazing low error let's say four percent uh wer with you know for all the language it may be hard but you may achieve for something similar for something you know commands and if that is the case that's it that's all sometimes you need just to really be able to do so i think you know the continuation of this week so i'm just continuing with that um is you're building a lot dashboards in this case you know whatever knowledge you have built i think that's good to see that everybody has uh, at least some somehow front end then with react back end even if your front end is with um, streamlit which is good that you have built a back end that's you know that's good so this week we will be even extending that more now connecting and using more apis just not only one api but also authentication and stuff so this is a good continuation from uh, from last week where you left it of course the model optimization is not but from the deployment perspective this is very good natural extension so before i mean i have 10 minutes um i am gonna take 20 minutes to explain the challenge but before that has anyone does anyone have a comment or final things about last week so that before we go we move to next week i mean the current week sorry yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah but maybe i can just add something yeah go on uh, sorry. i think someone else can say something as well but i just want to encourage everyone to recognize the work that's been done and one of the reasons we put these challenges together is so that um, you can show this off during an interview so even if it's not perfect just um, framing this in uh, a group project done in two weeks as part of a training program can be extremely valuable and i'm happy to hear that even if other not it wasn't always the expected presenter that was um, available. I think some of the last groups, I believe, surprised themselves with how much they can get done and how well everything worked together. So what's the point of all of this? The point of all of this is to learn and to have something that can be demonstrated. So don't, um, every person should be ready to keep working on this. There won't be a server available, but during the um, supported job search phase, every single person should understand what was done. And I would encourage everyone um, as soon as possible to write down what is their frame of mind right now? What questions do they have? Where would they start working? But don't underestimate how much work was uh, done because I think um, it seems like most groups did a very good job. Absolutely, I echo that. I mean, you Hi, definitely, hey, go on. Yeah, I was thinking of, uh, do, you mind, do you mind providing 10 minutes of break? or you probably don't have time before they come back to the introduction to change. Uh, should we give a five minute break? Yeah, five to 10, right. Okay, good. Yeah, we can definitely, uh, we can leave it just here. I think people can go. So we'll start yeah. in 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to stop the recording for this. Um, okay, yeah, that's true, yeah. correct. Okay, yeah. But I think what, what um, Arun said now is essential, um, that you must prepare this, like assuming that now you are presenting it to other people. And I think it's important. I mean, the work that's done is really a lot. And it's up to you to either consider it as nothing or more, like, you know, kind of it's the best thing, right? So preparing, I think all of you have done a really great job and just the next part is to own it and, and, you know, like represent your group in the best possible way you can. And, and thank you. Um, I think the people in week four and week five, uh, batch four, uh, group four and group five who did uh, kind of, even in the absence of, in the presence of some challenge, they managed to really give us